Hey guys, in today's video, I want to look at and compare the makeup artistry of Natasha Denona and Pat McGrath. A year ago, before I got my first Natasha Denona and Pat McGrath palettes, I was doing or trying to do a lot of research to see which I should get first. And um, it, it took me a long time to decide at the time, and this could be totally different now, uh, there really weren't that many kind of side-by-side -side comparisons. Uh, understandably, these two brands and the ladies behind these brands are different. They have different styles, uh, the way they go about marketing their product, the packaging, all of that is different. So I want to recognize that the comparisons I'll be doing is not expecting them or putting them into like an orange to orange, apples to apples scenario, but it really is to help uh, hopefully answer some people's questions on, hey, I'm ready to get my first luxury eyeshadow palette. Uh, who should I start with? What should I think about? Uh, and so if you are in that situation, you're looking at getting your first, second, or third uh, palette from either Natasha Denona or Pat McGrath, and you're just trying to get some more information to help with your decision, I think you're gonna find this video interesting. If you're new to the channel, welcome, good to have you. If you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribe, and ring the bell to get notified every time new content is released. So we can start with some basic information on both brands, where the products are made, what is their typical expiration, how long are these products good for, as well as pricing and packaging. Natasha Denona's palettes consistently have a 24 months shelf life. Pat McGrath's palettes range from either 12 months to 18 months. In terms of pricing, a typical full-size Natasha Denona palette, like this one here, has 15 shades is going to be $129. Uh, she also has released a few recent palettes from this year and last year that is in a smaller format. So this is the smaller format, also has 15 shades. So in terms of the different amount of colors, it's the same for both. It's just that the pan size are smaller. For these palettes where you get 15 shades but the pan size are smaller, uh, these retail for $65. And Natasha Denona does have other palettes that are larger. She has a 18 pan and a 28 pan palette. Uh, those were older releases from a couple years back. I don't have them, but if you're interested, I will have a link below to Natasha Denona's website uh, and you can kind of check out the whole range of offerings that she have. So when it comes to smaller palette formats, uh, Natasha Denona does have some mini palette options as well as five pan palettes. The five pan palettes, which I don't have any of, differ from the minis in that uh, they're bigger pan sizes. And those ones retail for, I believe, 58 or 68, I wanna say. And the minis retail for 25. Um, I'll check on the five pan palettes to see what the pricing is. Pat McGrath palettes, her full size palette is going to be her mothership palettes. These palettes have 10 shades to make up the color story and they retail for $125 each. She also has six pan palettes. Uh, this is Golden Opulence and this is a uh, six pan color story retailing for $65. And for smaller formats, she does also have Quans. Uh, this one here was released as part of this year's holiday collection. Uh, this is Interstellar Icon, part of the Lux Quad line. This retails for $58. Last year, in 2019, when she released quads, they were all shadows of the Blitz Astral formulas. And so you got four shades, it's a quad, uh, but they did retail for $65 each. Let's take a detailed look now at packaging. The packaging for these palettes do vary. A couple years ago, as she was releasing large 15 pan formats, uh, the packaging was kind of soft and you get um, the palettes or the shades sitting on top of like a matte background in black and you have the mirror here as well as the shade names are printed on this plastic sheet. 
Uh, so this is the gold palette. This is the Lila palette. Same amount of product and size, uh, different colors. Lila kind of has this like semi matte feel to it while this is reflective and shiny. The palettes released uh, after these uh, typical 15 pan larger palettes with that kind of matte interior. Uh, we have this year all kind of in this hard plastic, whether it's the uh, large pans or the smaller editions. And inside, the shadows sit against a black background, but now it's shiny. For the mini palettes in five pan, uh, it does have this clear acrylic cover. And it's not a magnetic closure, but it does have like some resistance as you close it. So it would look like it's gonna stay shut. Uh, and it does sit against a white background. I would say is, yeah, it's glossy plastic here. Um, so I think this packaging is fairly sturdy. The names are printed on the back of the palette. And then for the boxes themselves, where the palettes uh, come sitting in, fairly straightforward, different finishes, um, but they are carton boxes. Uh, the ones for the mini palettes, same thing here. Uh, colors will change according to the color story of that palette. For Pat McGrath packaging, it also varies, but in different ways than from Natasha Denona's. Uh, Pat McGrath packaging is more elaborate. There's more design thoughts and resources put into it, which you'll see all those different elements in a bit. Uh, a typical Mothership palette, which is 10 pan or her full size palettes, is gonna come in this kind of lacquered package. The shade names are not printed anywhere uh, on the palette. The back has this kind of second two-step assembly where they put the gold or this plate here uh, onto the palette. The packaging is the same for her quads. It's in this square format, but you have the gold plate here. And again, it's lacquered, mirror, none of the shade names are printed. This year's Lux Quads, which are different from last year's, does not have the gold plate, but it's still in this lacquered package. And there is also embossing here of Pat McGrath, uh, kind of her brand logo. And that is consistent for all of her palettes in this lacquered packaging. Occasionally, we do get a palette in limited edition packaging. This is Divine Rose 2 in limited edition packaging with a pink chrome finish, different from the typical black lacquer. Uh, Divine Rose 2 is still available in this packaging. And then for her six pans, they don't have lacquered packaging. It's uh, more textury and it opens up like this. You have a mirror on this side, the six shades, and the shade names are on a plastic cover that sits on top of the shades. And also it's a magnetic enclosure and then you can kind of put this elastic band on top to keep it from, you know, opening up by accident. For shade names um, of the mothership and quads, the shade names are printed on a separate um, kind of heavy stock card with a semi-gloss background and this is printed in gold. Uh, these cards will typically sit at the uh, bottom of the carton. I'll show you guys that in a moment. The exception to that is going to be uh, this year's Lux Quad. The shade names are actually printed on the back instead and there is no separate card. And just now when I said these cards sit inside a carton of the palette. This is the carton I was referring to. Uh, the way you open them is you kind of unwind the string here. It opens up like this. The palette sits inside with this right underneath. The design of these cartons do vary. I have a couple right here that I can show you. This is Divine Rose 2. This is Divine Rose 1. And here is Midnight Sun. The graphics of each of these are going to be different. Uh, it's going to match the color story. The way the quads open up are very similar, at least for last year's Blitz Astral Quads. You unwind the string, 
open it up and then you would have a printed card with the Shea names underneath. This year's quad, uh, there is no string to unwind. In fact, you would just open up the flap here and then the palette sits inside. We're done with the fundamentals and that was the easy part because it's just, you know, stating what is. Uh, it's in this kind of packaging, this is the pricing, and these are the typical shelf life for the products. Uh, the next part I want to get into is about the artistry and the thought that through experiencing the palettes, how I think they're put together and what my feelings are about that. Uh, this is the part that is really subjective. Uh, as you can see, I have eyeshadow palettes from both brands. I actually don't favor one over the other. Uh, I really reach for a palette depending on my mood and what I would like to achieve. So why don't we start with Pat McGrath. Today what I have on is from Pat McGrath. This is her uh, Divine Rose 2 palette. I'm going to show you guys the inside of this palette because I think it is absolutely stunning. Stunning. This right here is Sextraterrestrial and it is a multi-chrome. Look at that, the shift. Uh, I don't actually have that on my eyes, but I will include a tutorial of this look if you are interested um, kind of at the end. Why don't we start with Pat McGrath. The look that I have on today is using her Divine Rose 2 palette. I love this palette. It is stunning, it is gorgeous. This shade here is Sextraterrestrial. It is a multi-chrome. And she has uh, on her Mothership palettes these special shades. They really make her artistry stand out because the special shades combined with you know other shades in the palette, the different textures, the mattes, the shimmers, the metallics, uh, you can create these really eye-catching, impactful look. The quality of the formulas are beautiful. Um, they are pigmented, they're easy to work with. Uh, it might take some getting used to with some of the mattes that are extremely pigmented. You pick up a lot with just even kind of one dab with your brush. But once you get over that, it just becomes a whirlwind of, I don't know, creation, creativity. I always feel like a certain surge of creativity when I have time and I take one of her palettes, sit down, and try to create a look with it. Uh, especially when I'm trying to use shades that I haven't tried before uh, from, from any of the palettes. And so more on the special shades here, we talked about uh, this kind of multi-chrome, but this here is the Astral Blitz formula uh, that was, in her quads from last year. So this is Astral Pink Moon, which is a very glittery, shiny, you can, you can create a wet look with this. Uh, this is the multi-chrome here, might as well as we're swatching. Really just stunning. And Pat McGrath, loves gold shades. She has a lot of gold in her palettes. Uh, this is something, you know, it's kind of like a topic that's up for discussion, debate. Uh, I have this right here today. Um, so I, I love her color story and the way that she translates that onto a palette. What I get is always beautiful and there's just something about it that's like different from anything else that I have. And that's not to say you can't dupe looks uh, that you can create with Pat McGrath palettes, uh, but it's just the combination and the inspiration that you get from a color story that really transforms the experience with these products. With Natasha Denona, I'm going to show you a few different palettes. The thing that stands out for me is her color stories, how cohesive they are, and they're kind of instructive. In fact, in her Glam palette, she's printed instructional names for each of the shades rather than the traditional way of you know giving each of these a name. Uh, she's actually calling the shade here Center Eyelid because 
you are meant to put that on the center of your eyelid. You can use it different from that, but you can certainly follow this and create complete looks with it. Uh, this shade here is outer eyelid. This one here is lash line. Uh, so she's even released a palette with explicit instructions on how you can apply these shadows. Um, but with her color stories, I find that they are very cohesive, but also still very interesting and beautiful. So this is Leela. I love purple, mauves, and taupes, and this is pretty much the entire palette. Uh, it's the first Natasha Denona palette that I bought for that reason, and it's seen some good use. Uh, you can see I might hit pan first on this one here. They are, for the most part, uh, very easy to work with. Her shadows, uh, the quality of formula is fantastic. There have been some instances and some releases in the past where it's not her typical quality and it does vary, but I think with those instances, they were matte shades. Um, I've had nothing but good experience with her metallic shades and shimmer shades and really most of the matte shades um, don't really give me any issues here. Her most recent release is going to be this palette here, the Trio Chrome. These center shades are all multi-chromes. Gorgeous, so beautiful. And she's included all of these mattes here, which initially, uh, and, and even now I think when people look at it, they might think there's no shimmer in here. I think it's missing something. Or could we include uh, more multi-chromes? But again, with her trend to have uh, color stories and placements that are almost instructional, I think she did the same thing here. Each row, as you use a shade, you can create complete looks with it. So you can't really get very uh, lost or confused because the placement is just so, it's right there. Um, both Natasha Denona and Pat McGrath have tutorial videos on their Instagram and websites. Uh, and I definitely looked at them quite a bit when I first got these palettes uh, to just like educate myself and better understand how to get more out of these palettes initially. And now that I have the experience picking a palette up, uh, it, it feels more intuitive because you kind of get the sense of, you know, which direction they're trying to go and why they included, you know, this shade or this texture. Uh, you just kind of make it work. So Natasha Denona, overall, the looks you get from her eyeshadow palettes, her color stories is soft glam. Soft glam that you can amp up uh, but you can probably create a lot of daytime appropriate, interesting and glamorous looks. And then you can kind of turn around, transform that look into evening as well. Uh, there's just a lot of flexibility there. And if I were to summarize each of these brands in one sentence, I would say Pat McGrath is punchy and colorful at the same time. It's high fashion and you have a very luxurious experience from the packaging all the way to those special shades. With Natasha Denona, glamorous, interesting color stories, colorful color stories, but you can still create daytime looks with it. It's soft glam in every single perspective and angle that you could look at these from. And they're a touch easier to get into uh, when you first get the palette compared to Pat McGrath. So I hope you found all the information helpful towards your decision. And if you are truly in the space of, this is my first luxury palette, which one should I get? I would love to hear what you end up deciding. And for this very, very last part, I have the tutorial for this look. Stick around if you're interested. I will see you guys in the next one. Take care, bye. I'm going to take Extreme Burgundy and we are building that onto the outer corners. Then I'm going to diffuse the shade into the center of the lid gently.
Then using Divine Dusk, we're going to add this as a transition shade, starting from here. We'll go back in and diffuse that a bit. We're moving this shade towards the inner corners. And we're taking Bronze Rosé 005 and we're adding that to the inner corners. And I'm going to bring Bronze Rosé 005 further up into the crease so we get that shimmer right at the crease. Not all the way, just towards right about here. Then we're gonna take Skin Show Rose Opal and very lightly tap into Divine Dusk. And we're actually gonna use this to uh, buff out this line right here. So it's more of a gradient. I still want you know, that definition to be very obvious and noticeable, but I just want to soften it up a little bit. And we're going to bring that shade actually up into the brow bone and this area here. For blush, I'm going to take Suku's Powder Blush Palette. This is in 102, and we're gonna use this shade today. Then for lips, we're gonna take Chantecaille's Le Matte Stilo. This is in the shade Aster, and this lipstick is a matte finish. Under the eyes, I'm gonna go back into Extreme Burgundy and we're just lightly adding that shade to the corners right here and connecting that up to the outer corners on the other side or on the upper side. And Bronze Rosé 005 again. And just adding more pigment here. This is the finished look.